for our talk with the Jet Coach, Robert Sala. The Robert Sala Report brought to you by Infinity.com and Slomans. Coach, how are you doing today? Always good, brother. How you doing? I'm doing okay as well. So let's get, I mean, obviously the story of the last couple of hours is that it was reported by Diana Rossini that Zach Wilson was approached about playing. Now she's saying three minutes ago that it was Aaron Rodgers who approached him and he didn't want to play because of a, a fear of injury. Is there, what, what's the real story here, Coach? Um, I have no idea what players have with one another, what teammates have with one another, the conversations they have. Um, I know that, uh, you know, there was truly a reluctance to play and it was told to us in this building. I, I Players won't be here. I mean, it's just, or, and to quote the great Mike Tomlin, we want volunteers, not hostages. Um, but with that said, uh, you know, like about an hour ago, I said in my press conference, uh, Zach came in here and he wants the ball. He wants to play. And um, uh, we had a conversation about it, and I let him know where I'm at. I let him know the things that he needs to get better at. And uh, and the same things I'm, I told him, I'm going to tell you guys. I'm just not ready to make a decision on whether or not I'm, I'm ready to give him the ball, but but I know he wants it. But it's it's on the table that he may get a chance to play again. Yeah. Now, when when you sat him down, Coach, you know, my, my gut feeling is probably he, he lost confidence playing as poorly as he did. The two games that he has sat, has, have you noticed that he's regained any confidence? I mean, he's not getting first-team snaps, so I don't know how you could see that, but what's your vibe about him? No, for sure. It's, uh, you know, uh, he, ha he has confidence. Yeah, I think this is way different than a year ago. Um, I think last year he completely lost confidence in himself. Mm -hmm. um, do I think he needed a breather? Uh, absolutely. I do think he needed a breather. And um, I do think that uh, um, if given the opportunity, will he succeed? Yeah, I think so. But, uh, you know, to, to be fair to the young man, it's uh, it's been a heck of a three years. So, so you've... You, you, so you're refuting that report, that, that, that there has never been any sense that you've gotten from Zach that he didn't want to play? Uh, look, I, I, I don't know what conversations are had. You know, these, these young men have a lot of conversations with one another in the locker room, and if, if somebody expressed that from maybe he – I have no idea. If he had a conversation with his family, I have no idea, but um, – I know that I know that he has a lot of confidence in himself to go out there and play. I know he wants to play. I know he's he's been very upset that he uh, that he has been sad. I know he feels like we would have won the game if he. You know, and that's his mindset. So I only know what I know, and I know that he wants the ball. I know he's competitive as heck, and I know if uh, if he is the guy for for Sunday, he'll go compete his tail off just like just like the other two would. So. Um, you know, that's all I can go off of is based on the conversations I have, but, guys. There's, these young men have tons of conversations with a lot of uh, guys. And, and you know, empathetically, like I said in my press conference, you know, these guys are this, – this new age kid uh, coming out, they're, they're used to sitting out bowl games because they got to take care of their draft status. Like so, Caleb Williams is. Yeah, could it be possible? Yeah, you know, like that's th – these are all things that happen now. And um, – it's just a, it almost seems like it's common where I think that's where I think we'll, where the, the, the modern day athlete is missing the boat with regards to team. So, you know, is it conceivable that he had a conversation with his teammate? Is it plausible? Whatever. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm not going to say that it never happened, but at the same time, I know where his heart is. I know he wants to play. I know he still has that old school mentality that he goes out there for his teammates. Let, let me let me dig a little bit deeper, though, Coach. Did you go to him? Because you heard this rumor, or did he come to you and say, "Listen, I'm ready to go"? How did that play out? He came to my office today. You know, the quarterbacks came and watched tape. He walked into my office and said he wants the ball. I had not gotten to the point where I wanted to have a conversation with anybody yet because mm -hmm. I'm still trying to evaluate everything. I'm still talking to coaches. I'm still trying to digest the game, uh, the game from yesterday. Um, and uh, and he walked into my office about an hour, hour and a half ago now, and we had a really good conversation. And 
and he was pretty passionate about where he wants to go. Now, is that enough for you, or would you want to investigate to find out if that conversation was had? Oh, I don't care if that conversation was had. Uh, like I said, I, I, I'm always going to put myself in someone's shoes, and, uh, and you know, if that conversation was had, that that's not a... It's not like it's a negative. I, I don't understand why that would be such a big deal. Coach, can you help me understand what's going on with Boyle and, and Simeon? I'm just trying to understand. Uh, I'm watching. You guys needed, it seemed, such just a little bit of offense to, to get a win that could have kept you alive, and it just did not seem like either guy was capable of doing it. Is there a problem with the play calling are the guys simply not NFL caliber quarterbacks? I, I just think I speak for Jets fans when I say I do not understand what's happening offensively with this football team. Um, well, look, uh, the, the best thing I can tell you is it, it's been an unfortunate series of events when, when that lightning bolt struck our turf at uh, four plays into the season. Um, it's been a, a challenge to keep guys healthy on the offensive line. And it's like I said, like, it's not that I don't have faith in the five guys we have, but there are things that pop up in terms of continuity and nuance that just are continually showing up, play in and play out, that week in and week out with all the turnover. And again, they're not excuses because we still got to find ways to get better. I do think we had opportunities to, to put up some big points in yards yesterday uh, uh, with, with some missed opportunities, but... At the same time, I do think they did take advantage of opportunities that were there. So it was a little bit of both. Uh, do I think that we could have done some things better as a coaching staff with regards to play calling and all that? Sure, there's always going to be that. It's it, uh, it blame is never on one person, ever on one person. But um, you know, collectively, it's uh, it's it, it feels kind of like a, a domino effect of um, you would like the dominoes to just stand there for for a couple of weeks in a row just so we can keep building on it, uh, keep building the pile. But it just seems like whenever we get it going a little bit in a string, somebody knocks down the domino and the rest of them come falling down with it. Huh. And uh, but, but, it, but but overall, guys, like these guys are, are professional football players and, and you're just looking for some continuity. Not that continuity will happen every week, but uh, some semblance of it would be great. Now, you've told us in the past couple of weeks, you know, you don't worry about your job. That's not something you worry about. Rex Ryan today on our morning show said the Jets don't want another game. They're going to clean house. When you hear something like that, what's your thought? And then Rex Ryan is, over the past year, has certainly become a big supporter of yours, but he said they are going to clean house. What do you, what, what do you respond to that? No, you, I can't worry about all that stuff. I, you know, it's a, um, that's, that's our business. You know, the, um, you're always, you're always looking for whatever it is, but my, my concern is Houston mm -hmm. and that's all I can focus on. You know, it's, uh, um, it's part of the job. I, I, we've gotten to know you a little bit here, coach. Um, and, and I have a perception of you that makes it very difficult for me to believe that you'd be okay with a player, even in passing, not wanting to play for you, like, I, I'm just surprised that you said that you, you don't know why it's a big deal. Somebody's got to go play that position, no. coach, right? I mean, so what? Yeah, Tim no, Boyle can go get beat up, but Zach Wilson can't. No, no, that that that's a great question, and I, I, it's not that it's not it's it's not that it's not a big deal. Um, I'm saying that if it crosses their mind in this age of player and their thought and the way they think it's really not a big deal mm -hmm. at the end of the day there's a difference to me between a hey, zach take the ball and him saying god i really don't want it different that is different then he's out i just know if i, I what's if, that? if he says if you said coach uh, zach i want you to start the sunday and he says no i really would rather not then well, then, then he's then out gotta, yeah then, then he's out but that, but that's a whole, and like, that, that's a whole different, that's a whole different story. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna beg a player to be on the football field. That's not, mm -hmm. that's not how we do things. That's not how we'll ever do things. But I find it hard to believe. And again, it's he already demonstrated it. Um, if, if 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 a coach goes to a player and and says, "Hey, man, I need you on the football field," and he says no, um, well, that's a whole nother can of worms that we'll talk about. Let's end on a positive. How about that, Coach? So you're playing uh, Houston. And this is what D'Amico Ryan said about you. I don't know if you heard this yet. 
Um, he's done a great job with the right. Jets. I learned how to coach from being under Sala. He taught me a lot from scheme to handling players, game planning. I owe a lot to him. Probably the reason why I'm standing here before you. Great man. When you hear somebody say something like that who's been very successful in his first year, what does that mean to you? Uh, Ed, uh, I love Meek, obviously. He's, um, he's a special human. Uh, had the honor of being able to coach him. And uh, when he was the defensive rookie of the year, had the honor of bringing him in as a, when I was a, my first time as a coordinator, got him in as a quality control uh, to, to learn kind of the ropes. And he came up the right way in terms of just having to draw cards and do all that good stuff. And then uh, being a linebacker's coach and uh, just kind of watching him grow in terms of trying to teach it the way he did it and learning that not everyone was as him because he was a special talent, a ridiculously special talent, and uh, and learning how to how to how to coach every player and uh, and then from a schematic standpoint, him just being able to piece together the front and the back end and um, and understanding all of that and then obviously as a head coach, just watching him, he he's he's an awesome awesome human being and uh, uh, him and his wife and and his children they're a tremendous family, a tremendous man and. Uh, now, one final thing. If, if you lose another game, would you allow Aaron Rodgers to play? Um, <laughs> uh, let's try not losing a game. How about that? <laughs> All right. Very, like very, de very nice move. All right. Coach, we thank you for coming on. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. That was the Robert Sala Report brought to you by Infinity.com. Discover more about the luxury and performance of an Infinity QX60 crossover at infinityusa.com or visit your local Infinity dealer today in Slomans. Slomans has low price home heating oil for all New York football fans. Low prices, zero sacrifices for 100 years. Slomans has been a staple in home comfort. Call 1-866-OIL-DEAL. All right, we'll break down what the coach said and also the comment I made in the middle about Caleb Williams not playing in the bowl game for USC. We just talked to Robert Sala, and we'll try to piece together what he was saying. At no point, according to Sala, did he go to Zach Wilson, and Zach Wilson said, well, I'd rather not play. But it does sound like Zach Wilson might have said to a teammate, well, why should I play and get hurt? And what Sala was trying to tie it into is that the way college football is now in a team sport and it's hard, to, it's hard to really blame the guys. So USC is not going to the college playoffs, obviously. They lost too many games. And the presumptive number one pick in the draft, Caleb Williams, has said today he is not playing in their bowl game. Now, that's a terrible look if you're a member of a team. But if you're a businessman and you want to keep yourself healthy for the draft, it's probably the smart play. Now let's spin it around to Zach Wilson who probably thinking to himself, why should I get crushed behind an offensive line that's like paper mache, get myself hurt, and any chance I have of ever being a good NFL quarterback might be shot if I separate my shoulder, if I tear up my knee. I think he was putting those two things together, Don, and saying, listen, he didn't say it to me. If he said it to me, he'd be out of here. But if he expressed concern to teammates, then so be it. Yeah, but isn't that convenient? That still would bother me. I'd still want to investigate. I'd want to call Aaron Rodgers, say, did he talk to you? Did he actually have a conversation about not wanting to play? It sounds like he doesn't want to hear it. But the kid said to him, I want to play. So isn't that all that counts? No, because you, because you choose it to be all that counts. Wouldn't you want to find out? Did Aaron Rodgers have to convince you to play? Did your teammates have to convince you to play? And I would definitely make it part of my decision process whether he plays again or not. Oh, he's going to play again. I, but if, 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 let's say, Peter and I are having a conversation, and I've got some reticence about doing something on the show, but I never say it to you, and I ended up doing it anyway. The fact that I expressed some reticence to Peter doesn't mean anything. The fact yeah, that he not... might have said to Rogers, hey, should I really do this and get myself hurt for nothing? If he Wouldn't says it to the coach, I'm not doing it, then you, then you fire his butt. But the question is, why then did some... What does it say about his relationships with people if he said that to a teammate and they leaked it to Diana? Not a great look. No. It's, it, it's his teammate trying to get out in public that this guy's kind of soft. But, Michael, you, your, your work ethic has never been in question, right? We've never had an issue with you not wanting to give your all. 
This is somebody who has a history of ha of being a bit of a problem. But never all work right? ethic wise. Whatever it is, he wasn't all in last year. Right. His teammates gave up on him last year. He had to win them back over. And now word is leaked out that he didn't want to play. Now, he told you, I want to play, Coach, but you wouldn't want to investigate to find out if this guy's all in or not, whether Aaron Rodgers had to call him to convince him to play. Well, what difference does it make, Don? Because if unless he says it to you and he ends up being out on the field, then he's out on the field no matter what. Know, just It shows a weakness. Like, yeah, yeah, he doesn't have the guts to tell me, but he was telling some of his teammates right. and had to be convinced to play. I need to know if he's in. There's a question about confidence. There's a question about leadership. All those but things let me ask you this. fall under fire If you here. find out that he said to Rodgers, Rogers, I don't know if I want to play. You, what are you going to do? And he tells you he wants to play. What are you going to do? Not play him? I, I don't. I don't know if I want to play somebody that's not all in. Well, he said to you, he's all in. Yeah, but he said he had to be convinced to be in. Then he tells me, how do I know that's not out of weakness? He doesn't have the guts to tell me. He doesn't have the guts to tell me, the guy that can cut him, that uh, he doesn't want to play. Like, I need to investigate to find out if this guy's all in or not. Mm -hmm. And it didn't seem like Sala was interested in finding out the answer because he probably knows the answer is no, he doesn't maybe really he doesn't want to play. Maybe he doesn't want to hear that answer. He, he wants Zach Wilson to start. Well, you better, he better be right. Well, how, how could he be wrong? The, 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 the two other options because are brutal. They're brutal, Michael, but they're, they're guys that they may not have the talent, but they're in. They want to play. If the guy's scared to get hurt, how is he going to play? Is he going to play to the best of his ability? Is he going to rush for that first down, or is he just going to throw the ball away and say, I don't need this garbage? Like, how are the rest of the team going to uh, be affected by him not wanting to be out there and him not giving his all because he's afraid he's going to get hurt? You know how players play scared, Michael. They play poorly. Now, granted, their options aren't good, but at this point, Michael, I mean, it's sending a message to the rest of the team. Do you really want to play somebody that's scared to go out there and play? That maybe doesn't, that has to be convinced to go out there and play? Like, like Sala said, the Tomlin quote, you know, they're volunteers, not hostages. And I need to find out, are you, are you all in? Well, it, it's funny, though. I think the most serious aspect of this is something that Peter brought up. A teammate heard it and leaked it to somebody. Unless a coach heard it, and didn't want to hear it from Zach Wilson, and by getting it out in public, made Zach Wilson come in and go, I'm all in. No matter, I you know, I'll tell you what, though, Don, just, it's, I don't care how he got there. If he says he's all in, then he's going to play. All right, but but it, 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 it's, it felt like, and we've gotten to know Robert Sala over the last three years, all right? He's all in. We may not be happy with his answers. He might not be the greatest to guest at times, but the guy is all in. He does not sound like somebody that is just going to take this I would think he'd want to investigate it, and it, it just, he just—he kind of just sounded neutered to me, almost like it's not his call. It's like whatever, I don't need this aggravation if he can play. He says he wants to play. Fine, I'll believe him, and we'll just play him because somebody maybe is telling him to play him, or he's—or or he just sounded like a defeated man. That this is a guy that's all in. Whether you like him as a coach or not, he's all in. He cares about this team. He cares about winning. And now he's going to make a decision on who wants to play quarterback. As bad as Simeon and Boyle are, I'm sure they're going to line up and say, play me, play me. And now there's information out there, credible information, that this guy had to be convinced by a teammate to go out there and play. And you're cool with that? If you're the head coach of the team, the, you're going to just accept that at face value because you have no other choice? I would be red hot. But he, now, maybe he does not need to express that to us, but you know, the, the defending it like it's the, he said it's no big deal. All right, he says it's no big deal. I don't believe him. I believe that Robert Sala is red hot. But he also said disgusted. that if it was said to him, I'm not playing, the guy would be cut. He said that. Right, but, but I just think he's giving himself an out because I don't think he's got the power to cut him. He sounds like somebody that is, he's, all year he has sounded like somebody that is answering questions that he's not the person that should be answering them. Well, I mean, this is something that, this is certainly uh, something that fans don't care about. But I think it's disgraceful. And this is a guy that I've had uh, interactions with and I like. It's disgraceful that Joe Douglas, while this ship be sinking, has not said a word. I mean, are you kidding me? Don't you owe it to your fan base to explain why you went into the season with, with Zach Wilson as the backup quarterback and all the machinations that have followed 
doesn't the GM owe it to the fan base? You're going to just sit me up. Well, I don't. I only talk, you know, during the bye week and after the season. Well, no. When the ship is sinking, you got to talk. Brian Cashman talks. Why can't you? Yeah, it, it's it's really because you're it, hanging. It, Robert Sala out to try to answer all these questions. If I'm Robert Sala, I'm disgusted that I'm the one every week, not just every week, almost every day has to address the media. Once a week, come on with us. And one of the major problems with this team, whether he's uh, the, the problem, a major problem, a part of the problem, is Joe Douglas, and he hasn't spoken. Not a word. Unbelievable. Uh, uh, you've got to have some sort of, and I understand what well, their buy was earlier in the season or whatever, but at some point when you see that your coach is getting lit up, your coach is getting destroyed, you're getting destroyed, that the only person that gets to speak is the coach and that he doesn't go out there and, and say something, anything. That's why. Now, maybe we wouldn't buy it, maybe we wouldn't like it, but at least it'd be something. That, that's why when people don't talk after a game, and we bring it up, and everyone goes, oh, who cares that he, he blew off the media? If you don't talk, somebody else has mm -hmm. to. Robert Sala gets paid a lot of money, but he shouldn't have to take every sling and arrow for what's happened with the Jets. There should be some form of help in Joe Douglas speaking and explaining what has gone on. Unless Joe Douglas is just hanging Robert Sala out there to dry, so he takes the hit. It's a bad well, look, Joe. You look weak by not talking during this. This ship is sinking. It's, it's underwater than, right now, and you have not said worse, a word. What's worse than sinking? It, it's, it's on fire it's while sinking. I just, but Peter, you know what I'm talking about. The, the guy that's his motto is all gas and no break is cool that his quarterback might not be all in. I don't, I don't think he said that, though. He didn't say he was cool that it's all, that that he he said he doesn't have a problem with someone in, in 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 his stage in his career and who he is having the feeling as a fleeting thought. Right, and saying he didn't it to say, a teammate. He didn't say he was good with him coming. He said very specifically, if he came to me and said that, he'd be done. But him having a conversation, which is like I don't know. I mean, yeah, I get you, you. It's certainly disappointing to hear it, but like, is that enough to to? To think he should be out? I mean, they did do a lot with him over the last couple of years, guys, to make him doubt himself and to make him think I'm not their guy anyway. Weird. I don't know. It just, it, it's, it's a really just, it, it, every day, it's something with this team. No, it's getting worse every and day. It's, and it's really just embarrassing every single, because we're, we're having a conversation about who's going to be their quarterback. Is it going to matter? Is it going to matter? If it's Zach Wilson, are they beating Houston? No. Are they beating Miami? No. Are they going to survive? You know, wh what's what's the latest with uh, with Rodgers? Is he going it, to? It, it is just it's they grab our attention because they they're so interesting in their ridiculousness, it, it, and yet still they're mathematically alive, so the game still means something. If if we're going to have a legitimate conversation on who the Giants' quarterback should be against the Packers and the way the Packers are right now playing, it doesn't probably matter because they're mathematically alive. Certainly, the Jets are mathematically alive. But it really doesn't matter because no matter who the quarterback is, they can't figure it out. I've never seen an offense this embarrassing. 